everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. I'm so excited today to bring you another interview with one of our favorite Hallmark actors. I'm Rachel and I'm here talking to Peter Benson. This is so much fun. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. This is my uh, my first podcast interview and I'm, I'm super excited because I'm a podcast junkie. So, Oh, oh yeah. Yes. What are some of your favorite podcasts? Oh, good question. Um, uh, well, aside from yours, which, you know, just blows everyone else out of the water. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Uh, which I do love, actually. I, I love this podcast. And um, what else do I like? I like Dax Shepard, the armchair expert. Uh, he's got some good guests on. And uh, I like Serial. I just listened to this one called Dr. Death, which was very intense, but really well done. So oh. many good ones out there. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the true, well, that must have helped you, uh, we'll talk a little bit later about um, Chronicle Mysteries, given that yeah. she's a podcaster. In the, in well, the, actually, in the... not to jump too far ahead, but I had never listened to a podcast until I did that show. Oh, interesting. And, uh, and then I, they, I got addicted. I, I went oh. down a rabbit hole. <laughs> I've never on anything else in my life ever since. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously I, I run a podcast, but I love listening to podcasts. I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just fun. I don't know. I enjoy all different kinds. Me too. And you're just sort of on your phone and you know, it's a bad sign that your friends call and you see the call coming through and you're like, oh, I'm listening to a podcast. Come on. You know, like, right. I should probably engage in the world and not just listen, but yeah. And, uh, it's a good way to spend time in the car too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All yes, right. Yeah. Well, what we like to do with our guests is we like to ask you to introduce yourself and tell us what inspired you to become an actor. Ooh, okay. Well, uh, yes, I'm, I'm Peter Benson, and uh, I've been acting for, I guess, about professionally almost 20 years. But uh, what inspired me to become an actor? I think I was one of those kids who was like a real introvert extrovert. But I'd be like terrified to go up and, and answer a question in class or give a presentation or anything. And, uh, but then somehow in like grade seven, I did a, a play and I found that that was like a different thing because I, I really liked being on stage and really liked, you know, performing for an audience because I could kind of hide in a character as opposed to just being me standing up there. Um, and it was uh, this kind of cool feeling. And, and, then, uh, and then I did another play in the ninth grade, which was like a bigger, bigger production. And it was a comedy and I got all the laughs and I was like, oh, this is the best feeling in the world. And uh, so kind of from there, I got the bug, but uh, you know, I'm from Vancouver, from Canada. And at that time there was like no industry here. So it wasn't like I knew anybody who ever had acted on television or anything. So it kind of seemed like this crazy, crazy dream, but I always did, you know, acting classes and plays, tons and tons of theater. And then uh, after high school, I kind of got even more serious about it and, and did more classes. But then I had to like talk with my dad who was like, well, what are you actually going to do with your life? As dads like to do. It, it's weird. Mm -hmm. No parent likes to hear, I want to be an actor. Right. You know, they're like, oh, aha, what are you actually going to do, man? Right. Um, so I went to university and, and got a degree in communications, but all the while still doing acting. And then uh, my dad was really... Um, um, shocked when I said, now I'm done university, I'm going to go to acting school. Uh, he thought I'd sort of forget about it, but, uh, but he got supportive at that time. And so, yeah, I went to acting school then. And um, uh, I think really what inspired me is just that feeling of being on stage and, and the rush you get of doing a play. Mm -hmm. And I've been sort of chasing that, that high ever since. Mm -hmm. What were some of your early uh, plays that you were in? Oh, man, we did some originals, which I wish I had tape of because I can only imagine what a high school original uh, production would look like. But uh, one of the, the first ones that I had a big like lead role in Vancouver was 12 Angry Men. Oh, um, yeah, which is great. Still one. To this day. Great play. Um, I did Hamlet. I did uh, all kinds of little ones. Um, but the Hamlet and, and 12 Angry Men were probably the two sort of standout ones for me in terms of yeah. um, inspiring me to, to keep moving forward. What role yeah. were you in Hamlet? Were you... Hamlet, Hamlet. Oh, you were, you were the, the, the big role, the dream role. That's pretty exciting. Well, and let me, the hardest part about playing Hamlet is the tights, guys. 
it's uh, if you think it's uh, hard to do an accent, it's not. But standing up in front of a whole bunch of people in uh, in tights, man, with these skinny legs, it wasn't a good thing. But I fought through it. Yeah. And uh, I thought if I could do that and uh, and not hate myself and, and get out of there okay, then maybe I can do this. So that's uh, yeah, that was one of my early uh, stage work, and then a lot of comedies and stuff like that. Uh, in Vancouver, we got a group, uh, community of theater and, and some unknown playwrights and stuff that uh, we used to do a lot of like smaller black box theater and uh, and support new new writers and new actors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, is that something you do? Do you do live theater anymore now, or do you just just television? You know what's so funny is again I loved it back in the day and I haven't done it now in like twelve years and I'm the thought of doing it is terrifying which means I probably yeah. should do it but, yeah uh, uh, it's hard in, now I've got kids and, and yeah a lot of in theater so you gotta pay the bills and, and I've been fortunate to be working in, in TV and and that uh, the hours on that are pretty crazy but one day I'll get back on the stage mm-hmm. but yeah. through that I then like yeah. in my early early years it was always doing theater but then I kind of discovered. Uh, the joy of making short films and independent films and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that, that if I ever had free time, I was trying to like make a project on film uh, in the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you've done so um, many projects and I'm just wondering what, what is a day in the life like for a working actor? Like, uh, like you are, what, what, what kind of keeps you motivated to, to, to stay in the game? Yes. Uh, there are many, many different versions of day in the life of a, of a working actor. Um, you know, there's days where nothing happens, phone doesn't ring, nobody's interested, and you're like, what am I? I'm an adult. Shouldn't I be doing something today? <laughs> um, so those days, you uh, go to the gym, you hang out with your kids, you clean your house. Yeah. Uh, and then there's other days you have like, you know, five auditions, and, and you don't know how the heck you're going to get from one to the next, or learn the lines, or, uh, you know get someone to watch your children while you go and and uh and then the good days are, are when you're you're on set which are are you know the, the best days and and uh but they're long long days it's definitely a, a riddle like my wife is an actor too and so trying to find the balance of life and and um this crazy career is is a bit of a challenge but but we make it work mm. very cool yeah that's really cool yeah. i would think at least that you guys can have sort of empathy sympathy for kind of each other ups and downs uh being both in the in both both being actors that's gotta be helpful yeah you know but he always asks us you know what's it like to be married to an actor is it hard but i i think it would be hard to not be because i think somebody else would just think that you're crazy and like why don't you do something that's more like structured or whatever but we get each other and we understand that uh it's a very like all or nothing kind of game you know you're like like i say you're you're either not working or you're working all the time and the hours are crazy. And uh, so, yes, having a, a partner that understands that is, is pretty key. Yeah, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, so you're, correct me if I'm wrong, but your first role for Hallmark was in A Bride for Christmas. Is that correct? You know what? Yes, it was. I think that was the first one. Yeah. So that's a, cl- a classic, a favorite. And uh, so what was that project like to be on, especially as a first? I mean, you got such a great cast in that, you know, movie with Andrew Walker and Kimberly Sussman and all, all of that cast. Uh, was that a fun one? Yeah. So- you know what? Honestly, that you're, you're right. That was my first Hallmark movie and, and probably one of the top two or three. It was so much fun. Mm-hmm. I didn't even really realize, I mean, Hallmark has grown so much over those, I think that was about five or six years ago. Um, and it's become a huge thing since then. But at the time, we just got this like really cute script. Uh, I'd never met Andrew Walker before, and we kind of became buddies right away. And he's so charming and fun. And uh, that's where I met Kimberly Sustad, who was great, and um, you know Ariel as well. And really, just a really cute script, kind of your classic romantic comedy. And my favorite part about that one too was they they really let us play and. Um, you know, I kind of played, I, I often play the kind of, um, I wouldn't say jerk because that's not the right term, but the guy who's, you know, got a bit yeah. of an edge to him and, uh, and Andrew Walker played such a great straight man. Yeah. And, uh, so we just had a, a great time kind of bantering back and forth. And it's always fun if as an actor, when they kind of let you improvise a little bit and, and have some playfulness with it, 
And so we, we had this great chemistry together. And uh, Kimberly was one of those people that, you know, you just, because that was one of her first kind of projects at all. You know, she was pretty new to the game. Uh, and you could just see she was going to do fantastic. And yeah. it was one of those magic gifts where you just get this, like, great, you know, blended people and everyone gets along the director the script the network and and so yeah even when i see that one on tv now i'm like yeah that one stands the test of time that was that was a fun one yeah i really i really enjoyed that one it has a it, it you can tell it's uh it's an older one because it takes a little bit more risk than some of the ones that we see now and uh i i i really enjoy it it's it's a lot of fun and yeah you were lucky you were able to you weren't you didn't get so pigeonholed as the wrong guy like some of the, some of the other guys have gotten uh, you you played sometimes you were the wrong guy and sometimes you uh you were just a normal guy like a detective or whatever so yeah, absolutely nice. love that. i really love there was another uh hallmark film i did called uh, with kimberly stuff that as well called walking the dog yes uh with Jennifer finnegan and, and uh sam page and uh, that one, I got to play kind of the, the nice wrong the guy. Nice wrong guy. And uh, so I think the key for me is I always try to make, even if it's the wrong guy, I try to make them likably wrong, you know, yeah. and just not right for that person, but uh, still fun. And, 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 you know, those are the roles that, that sometimes are, can come in with some energy and some passion, but because I think it's an important balance because if, if you're too like, too much of, a, of the wrong guy it almost makes that girl look bad by being with you you know so yeah. you want to give them some some sense of humor or something that you're like oh, i could see how she kind of went with him but she'd be much better off with this guy yeah you, know? I mean, you can do sort of the deliciously wrong guy and some actors are able to pull that off like we kind of love casey manderson is great at playing the deliciously wrong guy but um totally. but, but he uh i feel like that's when she when he does that it's when she's sort of lost in the big city and has to come right. back to the country and realize that, like, <laughs> doesn't get doesn't back to her. Anymore, yes. yeah, I totally yeah that's what that's what it's there to represent right and then uh and then a handsome local man yeah. will we, right because the yeah because walking the dog you were a pretty nice guy that just wasn't the right guy and then also yeah. i really like the christmas list i think it's one of the more underrated uh hallmark christmas movies i think it, it's actually like her motivations are really solid and i think the script is really good oh. and i love alicia and i think your character like you're not actually the wrong guy you're just like you're not a bad guy yeah. You get it. You get yes. it. <laughs> one of my one of my favorite uh, Hallmark movies that I've done is, is Christmas List. I, mean, I love that character. He was just like he was the right guy for somebody. Clearly not her. Yeah. And uh, like you said, the setup they ha they had was was really charming. Uh, with her trying to cross off all these like uh, fantasies of Christmas that she never got to play out, and he just genuinely didn't get it. He, that, yeah. I think that was what. The fun part about his character was it's like he wanted to like her he wanted to support her and everything she said his instinct was just like that doesn't sound fun you know and so <laughs> it made for the really but but you like wear the shirt i mean you're and even though you're a yeah, designer i mean you're a team player i i i appreciate that and i mean you just can't get off the phone enough with that guy from peru or whatever it is <laughs> that's right <laughs> like get and off the phone that was, in that was, so was it really Oh yeah, they just sort of say stuff about this guy in the factory, and I didn't think any of that would get in there, and then it's all there. But they also kept stuff like even like uh, you know, kind of scratching at the flannel shirt and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which I which I love that that like, sometimes they like like you have those little nuances and stuff like that. And um, I, to be honest with you, that was really probably the funnest character I've I've got to play. Okay. Uh, Brett, I really yeah, I really liked it uh, because. I, I think, well, like I said, I thought that her motivations were really clear because she doesn't, she's not just acting like a crazy person. She, 
she finds this list and she realizes she has turned into her mother and that's what she most yeah. didn't want to have happen in her life like she did not even though she loves her mother she did not want to turn into her mother and she realizes reading this list oh, i totally have turned into my mother and so that's why she goes and does the list as opposed to like a typical hallmark movie where they're just doing the random christmas activities there's like motivation that makes sense in, yeah. in this one so i thought that's what made the script and alicia's performance better than uh, and that's why your character would have a hard time understanding her doing all these activities because you don't understand that that backstory about her mother that's right yeah, yeah she's trying to connect with like who she was as a child you know and not get sort of caught up in all the same things her mom did but yeah. he is completely in adult land and just wants to like go to Hawaii or wherever he wanted to go. And uh, so, yes, he's trying, he, he does his best team effort. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't yeah. quite come through. I, one yeah. of my favorite parts about that, that film was uh, I'll never forget when I, when I got it um, like a day or two or maybe like a week before filming, I got a call saying, Hey, uh, they're just curious. Do you know how to ice skate? And I was like, I, I played hockey growing up, but oh, you know, yeah. I don't play that much anymore. But, but I was like, yeah, I can ice skate. And then they send me <laughs> a new uh, version of the script. And I look at the thing and it's like, Brett does an ice dance performance for her. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I can't even dance on the ground, let alone dance on the ice. So this is That's not going to go well. <laughs> so I literally <laughs> ran to the rink for like four days in a row trying to like come up with something and it was not going to be good and thank god and so i was terrified and then we got there and they discovered that that um alicia really didn't skate uh -huh. we were supposed to kind of do this dance together so they rewrote it again so that we just sort of like you know uh, that i could skate and she couldn't and we just sort of had this cute little scene but i, I was terrified for about three days leading <laughs> up to that I was like what what have I got myself into here? <laughs> and does saying that you know how to ice skate equal saying that you know how to dance on skates? I don't right. know. But if any young actors are out there and they're listening, someone asks if you can skate, you gotta ask, do you want me to ice dance? Because it's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole different thing. We don't do a lot of ice dancing in hockey. Right. Um, so, yeah. That's funny. So once, I think that was early in the shooting too. So once I realized I didn't have to do that, I was like, let's have some fun. Let's, let's do yeah. that. That ice skating yeah. rink gets people into so much trouble. <laughs> Maybe it's like, oh, oh, that's okay. what I'm just like, yeah. pick another activity, like have them go sledding or something. Like this is not sure. working out. Yeah, yeah. Let's build snowman. Everybody can do that. Uh, so you, uh, you've been in all but one of the Aurora Tea Garden movies. Is that correct? You know what? I think I even snuck into that one. I think I've been in all of the films. There's, there were some schedule conflicts okay. and stuff on some things, but I do think I've made an appearance in every Aurora Tea Garden. In fact, I'm talking to you from my trailer on the set of Aurora Tea Garden 11. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so what do you like about playing Arthur on the show? Oh, Arthur, Arthur, Arthur. Well, Arthur is such a nice guy. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, these movies, in all honesty, my favorite part about them is is the cast. Candace Cameron Bure is like the nicest person in the world, and we get along so so well. And um, we we laugh like all the time on set. Too much, mm -hmm. probably, for everybody else's sake. Uh huh. Um, and Mary Lou and, and Miranda and, and Alexa Doig and and the kind of core characters that have been there for a long time. We have such a great camaraderie and, and uh you know mary lou always jokes that we're like a you know a theater troupe that's traveled together because we just sort of go away for six months and come back and just pick right back up and, and same with our our producer uh jim head who's, who's amazing and, and we all just have a great time and and so, and they've got this great little dynamic and, and arthur is this charming character who um i don't know it hasn't been as talked about as much in the last few films but in the first few films you know we referenced a lot that he used to date aurora back in the uh -huh. day and they, they were on like a break candace and i have figured out like one of those ross and rachel from friends kind of breaks uh -huh. where get back together and then all of a sudden he's with lynn and then she's pregnant and they're married and it all happened very fast so <laughs> that creates this fun dynamic of like Arthur kind of wanting to let Aurora help and Lynn looking at him like absolutely not. And so there's this little triangle there that we've been able to kind of maintain. Uh -huh. um, and I love stuck in the middle of that triangle. It's, it's, it's really, really fun to 
watch Arthur try and say the right thing with these two powerful women beside him, both wanting him to say something completely different. Um, and uh, and then, like I say, just the dynamic of the cast has been has been the best part. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah, literally it's a like, great cast. We love we love the Aurora Tea Garden movies, and yeah, I mean Mary Lou Henner, legend. That must be really fun to work with her. Oh, um, a legend! And, and Mary Lou is like one of the coolest people that you'll ever meet too, because we uh-huh. obviously know about her, her amazing memory. She can remember everything. I can't even remember what I ate for breakfast, but she's like. <laughs> 72 on a Tuesday, May 9th. I was, you know, I had a falafel and I wore a red shirt. <laughs> you know, it's like thing that's ever happened. Yeah. And, and, and now you have yeah, you can actually look it up and she was right. You can see a photo uh-huh. of her on that day or whatever. <laughs> that's but she cool. also, you know, she, she has stories about old Hollywood and all these great mm-hmm. actors and she knows everybody. And, and she's also like the most generous kind of person. She like, she helps everybody and would, goes out of her way to do nice things for you. And, and, uh, and, and yet she's also the TV legend. Um, and, uh, and Candace, same thing. She's, she's like just so, so kind and so thoughtful. And, and, and to be honest, she laughs, she laughs at everything on set and starts crying, which makes me laugh so hard. Um, and it's kind of my favorite part is to, to make her break up in the middle of a take. Uh-huh. even though I'm not supposed to um but it doesn't take much and once she gets she gets off track she's just like laughing and you can't get her back so yeah. as, as actors those are our favorite moments that's really cool uh, so do you think that Arthur would do a better job if Aurora wouldn't meddle so much in all this if she would just sort of go away are you saying that Arthur's not a good cop. Are you no, saying I'm that? saying I'm saying. <laughs> does she make it harder for him to do his job, or does she help him do his job? Well, because I always joke, we're always just like we never want her help. We always tell her to stay out of it, and and yet she's always right. Um, but it's a good question. I think I think Arthur thinks he would do better if she didn't meddle. But I think for the the talent of Lawrenceton, it's probably really good that she's helping because she's the one that catches all the bad guys. We're yeah. always there like a step or two behind. So I, I kind of like take peace in the thought that we would have caught them eventually. We're just yeah. a step behind her. She's really good. She's quite a good uh, problem solver, that Aurora. Yeah, I mean, she can, she, she can, especially this last one. I really enjoyed it. But I'm just like, why are you there at that stakeout in the middle of the night by yourself? Why are you doing this? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> Probably not the best but choice. My favorite yeah, I know. I remember that one. And then my favorite part is the next day. I'm like, I'm really disappointed in you. And then, then she just sort of carries right along. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Anyway, um, so here's what we're going to do next. Uh, yeah. but, but she ends up catching them. Uh, you know what else I really like is that they kind of, I think it was in that one and maybe seven. That was, that was nine, right? I think that's Aurora nine that you're talking about. Uh-huh. Um, I, think, I think so. I think you know, <laughs> In seven and nine, they, they've made Aida, Mary Lou's character, have some, like, kind of, like, really strong powerhouse woman moments where she, yeah. like, clocks the bad guy. Right. And that is like, my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. It was, it was that one that she, like, flips the guy over with the gun, and then she's kind of yeah. like, what? And I'm like, oh, these, <laughs> these sea garden women. Well, I think I, I mean, even brought some jokes with them, but it, didn't make it in. But. It makes sense. If I lived in a town where all these murders were happening, I would probably be. I would probably get up on myself to bed. Yeah, yeah. You need to take a class in martial arts if you're going to live there. Yeah. You know, cause, because a lot, not a big town, but a lot of dead bodies. You know? yeah, so right. uh, <laughs> you might want to protect yourself. And Aurora keeps moving to these different houses and she's all alone in these big houses. I'm like, I would live with like eight people. I would get yeah. a bunch of roommates. Sure. Um, yeah, but, uh, but it keeps our stories going. So. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to join this this murder club, mystery club. No, I just <laughs> totally are. right. Bad very, news. yeah. Bad very, news. <laughs> You're either gonna be a suspect, go to jail, get killed, or like someone in your family is gonna get yeah. killed. So if that's in the fine print when you join the club. You didn't. You got to read all that before you tick the box that you're gonna yeah. become a it's, real murderers member. It's we bringing actually, you know, bad I, vibes. No, for sure to the town. <laughs> But we keep motoring along, and that's why I love it. And and we have a couple new, I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to say, probably not much, but a couple new Real Murders members, and, and we just did some fun scenes uh-huh. where they're doing, like, 
costume uh, parties and stuff like that. And uh, this this new one, I think, is going to be really fun, and oh. and uh, yeah. and the viewers are going to like it. I hope. Well, well, we're very excited for sure about that. And yeah. uh, so, do you have a favorite of the ones that have aired so far of their were Tea Garden movies? Oh, good question. You know, it's. Hmm. You know what? We're now at that point where I'm like, how many have we done? Do I even remember them all? Uh, I I really like the um, Reap What You Sow, which I think uh-huh. is number eight. Um, oh, interesting. I just like. Do you remember that one? I, I like. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, the, the concept of the the guys with the YouTube thing and uh-huh. and uh, didn't necessarily see where the thing was going. And that one, um, Arthur had to really step up because Lynn was on maternity leave because our, our actress Miranda Freegan was actually on maternity. She, I think oh, she had okay. her baby. Um, so it was fun for Arthur who was like, uh, you know, kind of always this go between between uh, Roe and, and Lynn on that one, you know, Lynn had given him the directive of kind of like, you keep her out of this. So he had to kind of step <laughs> up and take his place and try to be firm with Roe. And so, so I think for me personally, yeah. acting wise, that was pretty fun to to do that, and and uh, I just love getting the scene uh, w- with Candace in particular. Like I say, just because yeah. some reason she just looks at my face. I don't know if this is a good thing that she looks at my face and starts laughing. I'm going to take it as a compliment, <laughs> or, as a good, or else I'll cry myself to sleep. But um, you know, she, she just looks at me and starts weeping with laughter, which then of course makes me want to make her laugh more. And, and yeah. so we had a lot of fun too, and and. Uh, and it was a lot of fun yeah. but but so many so many, you know it's so many good moments it's hard to pick a favorite yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah lots of great moments. yeah i think yeah. last scene alive might be my favorite i really like the whole concept of the movie within the movie oh yeah the movie and, within a movie that one was great yeah, too that was fun and i like that big uh that the, i was a pretty good set piece i think that old factory kind of that whole that place I don't yeah. know, that was good huge the huge mine that they had and, and yeah and that one we had some, some like big um uh crane shots and and candace mm-hmm. was like actually hanging off the cliff i think i still have a video on my phone of like she's like no no i want to do that stunt and she was like right up there <laughs> and yeah the movie within the movie was really fun and and mm-hmm. martin wood directed that one and, and uh, he had these great great scenes with the steady cam where they were kind of like just walking through the movie set and you kind of met all the characters and then there'd be like a fight. It just looked great. And it was very cinematic and, and kind of funny to see, you know, who was playing who in the movie and all that stuff. Yeah. That one was really good. Yeah. So you had a small role in, uh, in everything, everything, the feature film, I believe. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. And I was just yeah. curious, uh, what's the difference? in the experience of working on a feature film versus a television film is it basically the same you know what, it, a lot different or you know on that one in particular it was kind of the same because um it was uh they didn't have a huge budget they had a really cool concept and a, and a good uh, story and some great actors but because they didn't have a big budget they were still kind of running and gunning which is a little more like a, a movie the week uh-huh. you know back day not to date myself but um they used to spend maybe 21 to 25 days to film a movie of the week and now it's down to like 15 sometimes 13 or 12 mm-hmm. so what that means is there's not as much time when you're shooting you kind of have one or two cracks at it and then then you got to move on and and usually on the bigger budget features they they only do a scene or two a day and you have a lot of time to really oh you know refer it feel the beats if it doesn't feel right you go again and they get all these different angles and stuff like that so there definitely is a, a difference between you know a big feature film and and uh, a movie of the week in terms of you know just literally how much time you have to to, to do it uh, but on that particular film it was pretty pretty quick as well mm. okay interesting uh so um in uh, my favorite wedding your character so he comes so close to not getting marry the bride like he needs to tone yeah. it down on those dance lessons <laughs> like, yeah. now that, if i could talk to you i'd pull him aside and say what are you doing man yeah. and uh, actually that was one of my favorite parts of that movie is that that uh, paul green's character actually has the opportunity 
to do that. It's like, right, she kind of runs out at the rehearsal dinner, the, the slideshow got messed up because I was supposed to do it and and poor Maggie had to do it instead. And I got, you know, I don't know if you remember that, and they showed like her, her this was a flip doctor, they showed all these slides of her patients or something like that. And it was really gross and it mortified my bride and she runs out. And I chase after her and I miss her. And I say to Paul's character, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do this. And I was like, you should tell me that I shouldn't be doing the dance lessons. I should go fix it. But he's like, no, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> and, and he encourages me to keep the secret, <laughs> even if it's going to cost me the wedding. So I'm like, are you really my best man or what's happening here? Because, uh, yeah. yeah. That was a, I, I put a lot of pressure on that dance, my character. <laughs> Um, and that one was really funny for me, too, because the woman playing my bride was a girl named Christine Chatelaine, who's one of my best friends and has been for like 20 years. And I hang out, my wife and her and her and her husband and our kids are like a weekly hangout. So now that movie's on TV and they're like, the kids are old enough to be like, why is mom marrying Peter? <laughs> and and uh, that's a hard one to explain to your household of, of children that uh, you're on television getting married to Auntie Christine and um, and so but her and I also cannot look at each other without laughing so we're supposed to have this beautiful dance and we're like just don't look each other in the eyes whatever you do don't look me in the eyes for real because we'll both start laughing because it's supposed to be this romantic beautiful dance at the end and so we're literally just looking to the side of each other's face pretending that we're like staring into each other's eyes gazingly, but we couldn't do it. We had to, we had to veer left so that we didn't break up laughing. Yeah. I mean, you are all for the secrets in wedding movies where you're getting married because also in your wedding March movie, you had all the secrets. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a secret guy. Yeah. And I don't have a good... <laughs> If you're out there and you're about to get married and you're listening, don't have a secret. Don't, yeah. especially if it's like just a dance move. Nah, it's not worth. <laughs> no, not worth, you know, it's you're, only you're, gonna go bad for you. What you were trying to get her a dress or something, or what were you? T I forget. Yeah, March. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. In both of those, and I filmed them fairly um, like close to each other. It wasn't. It was kind of almost not back to back, but it wasn't that long in between those two projects. Uh -huh. And I kept thinking, man, what am I doing? Because I kept disappearing. That was the, the recurring theme. It'd be like, where did he go? And I was like on the phone trying to get this designer to make a beautiful dress for her wedding, which I could have just like told her. Right. You know what I mean? Well, and, she's going to want to know about her wedding dress. <laughs> anyway. Oh, again, it was yeah. a beautiful part for a movie. But in real life, again, I was talking <laughs> yeah. designing your wife's wedding dress without her knowing about it. That my wife would not have gone for that. Risky That's move there. there. Yeah. Risky, bold move. Bold <laughs> move. It worked out both times, but I don't know if it, it always works out that way in real life. But uh, yeah. yeah, those were those were some strange character traits of, of mine. <laughs> both of those. Yeah. That must have been fun to work with Gabrielle Miller on that movie because she just seems like. Oh my God. She is like the, the, the best person in the world. She's so yeah. charming and yes. funny. And we we knew each other from like 20 years ago, but not that well. But we were like friendly. But but on that movie, we were just kind of like two peas in a pod. And we had to shoot in, in uh, Harrison Hot Springs, which is a little outside of Vancouver. Uh, and and Josie Vazette and, and Jack were both awesome, too, and super like welcoming. Anytime you can kind of go out of town and you get everybody stay in the hotel and uh -huh. all that That's stuff. Fun create this like nice energy and and uh -huh. and i also think because i had two small kids at home that were not sleeping anytime you have a big king size bed of your own room and you're out of town it's good, <laughs> it's good. Those, going back to the, the what's it like to be an actor those are the good days yeah my wife would call she's like, you're not sleeping and you kind of have to be like wow we've got this huge it's a really tiring day tomorrow and you're like is it really <laughs> going to set beautiful they have good food Nice people, yeah. your makeup, you know, soul, very different. Than soul control over the television remote, you know, it's, it's. Oh, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. I'm, I'm it's such a, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting lame now, so I never want to go out and do anything. So everybody like, you want to go for drinks? I'm like, are you kidding? I get to watch what I want to watch on TV. I'm going <laughs> to go to my room, watch the Food Network, watch all my, right. my wife and I are bachelor junkies which is kind of embarrassing but uh i have a bit of a reality tv obsession so uh -huh. I can watch those shows. do yeah. you watch ever watch survivor 
Oh yes, yeah. Ah! I, I'm not. Uh, uh, I haven't seen it for a few seasons, but it's our. I used to have uh, Survivor parties at my house. No way! It's my favorite, one of my favorite shows, and it's how Amber and I actually met is through be- being fans of Survivor. We were both in. Oh a, really? Yeah. <laughs> We love, we want to know good podcast. Yeah. If you want to know good podcast about Survivor, Rob has a podcast, uh, is a great podcast (laughs) about Survivor. Yes. And, and Big Brother. But, um, but yeah, we both were fans. We were both patrons of Rob has a podcast. And that's how we ended up meeting because we were both in Utah. Oh, wow. We met at a patron event and then it all kind of, happen uh but yeah we love the new season is just about to start it's really exciting so anyway that's right the best yes uh, it's so good yeah so all right well also so we have to ask uh you were in a side sale delivered home the home again i i uh, i can't remember what your part was in that but um everybody i know who's worked on the on that series has had just a really great experience yeah, yeah, I remember that one. It was, gosh, that one was interesting because I actually, what happened with that? I, I, I booked a part on on that show, which was, um, uh, I was like a football coach or something, and it was this, this really interesting story, and uh, and then something happened, and that script never got made, and and I can't remember, like I said, I'm not on the show oh, all the time, okay. so I didn't know all of, uh, what what happened there. Something happened you know, as these things do, the scripts change or something, or that character got written out or something like that. Oh, from and home again? Okay. Yeah, or maybe it was, I'm not sure what it, that one was called, but uh, but there's such nice people over there, they're like, we're just gonna, we'll get you in another one. And sometimes people say stuff like that and then you never hear from them again. And then sure enough, a few months later, they just called and said, hey, do you wanna do this part? And uh, and uh, so I came out and did it. It was a pretty small part, but it was it was fun to get out there. And I think, my name was like Mr. Everett or something like that. And I was the um, guy in the beginning, the girls kind of come to my store and I help them with their the package that they're sending off or whatever. And, uh, and then the, the gang comes and asks me about it 14 years later or whatever it is. Mm, okay. and, uh, and so it was really, really fun set. And, and like Jeff Gustafson is, is a good buddy of mine. We've known each other for years and Crystal Lowe um and kevin fair the director just like all really really nice people it's just got like the nicest energy yeah that's that so that's um, really cool yeah and fans love it i was in it for like oh, two yeah. minutes it's probably the coolest part i've done in years and i got all these like notes and nice words from people and i was like oh this feels yeah. good <laughs> good to have support the hallmark fans are so amazingly supportive it's, it's funny because mm-hmm. if you look at some like Twitter things for other shows people can get mean and say all kinds of intense things yeah. I've found like nothing but like positive fans and, and support for things and you know you look at like the Hardys and the, the Sloopers yeah. and all these people and and uh and they love it and it's uh it's kind of cool to be a part of that yeah we kind of joke that the worst you'll get is kind of a a, a maybe an unflattering collage <laughs> that's about, right that's about yeah. as bad as it gets we'll leave it at that <laughs> yeah. we'll leave it at an unflattering right. collage you don't need to get real nasty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, you are going to be in this upcoming Chronicle Mysteries, uh, the second one, The Wrong Man, I think it's yes. called. Uh, so yes, The Wrong Man. Without divulging too much or whatever, but was that a fun uh, set to work on, a fun experience? Oh, that one was uh, one of my favorite experiences because uh, for, for a multitude of reasons. The first uh, is that the uh, the lead actor on it, uh, obviously Alison Sweeney, it's, it's her show and she's the star and uh, executive producer. Uh, but the male lead is a guy named Benjamin Ayers. He's done a couple yes. other Hallmark films and also happens to be one of my best friends in the world. He was in my wedding party. And, oh my gosh. And, uh, yeah, so we're like really, really good buddies, and um, and then Dave Collette is another actor in it. Uh, he plays a character named Chuck, who you'll you'll soon meet, a really fun character, and they're kind of the three of them. So they'd already done the first one by that time. Um, so when I got cast in, in the second film, you know, yeah, I came to set and it was like Allison and and Dave and Ben were already there, and they just sort of welcomed me into the family right away. And uh, so it was this amazingly fun experience. And, and Allison, 
got us going on podcasts. So we would all listen to whatever podcast at night and then come back and sit in the trailers the next day and talk about it. And she's so smart. It was just really, mm-hmm. it was really fun to just like connect and talk and, and, and learn and discuss and see the different sides of all these podcasts. And, and uh, so the, the people on it were amazing. And, and Carrie Ingram was the director who did a bunch of the Auroras and I've done many movies with him over the years. So he was great. But then the actual, I think it's going to be a great new new series, and and the mm-hmm. the character I got to play, um, called the wrong man, seems to be my like motif on on Hallmark that I'm not the right <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> it's just like Peter Benson is the wrong man. I'm like yeah, for everyone but you, honey. Man, tell my wife. Um, maybe one day I'll be the right man. Uh, well, yeah, but, but, or you're uh, the you're the right guy that uh, makes poor wedding choices. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I just need yeah. to go to like a wedding class, how to get married properly. I need a how to win the girl class. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys know of anybody teaching that, <laughs> definitely send me, well, send I mean, me the link. Okay. But, <laughs> they must be pretty but, but, confident in it to have to have Greenlit 3, uh, not just a pilot like they've done with some other yeah. ones. So. No, I think they, like, uh, I, I saw little bits of the first one and it looks great. And then uh again you just for like on a like I, I said i had a great time the people were were awesome allison and, and and ben and uh that was fun but the, the actual acting on it was fun for me too because my mm-hmm. character um again without saying too much but i think it's in the trailers and stuff he he'd been accused of of um of something and uh and he's hoping that that uh, the podcast will prove that he's innocent but what, what's really cool about the show is you don't actually know. There's a, there's a lot of, it goes back and forth. You're like, oh, maybe he is innocent. Maybe he's not. And, uh, and, and it was a very dead ahead kind of mm-hmm. layered character. Not, it wasn't like comedic or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I had a great time um, walking in, in that character's shoes. And, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's going to be really interesting. I, I really don't think you know up until the end, you know, who's innocent and, and who's guilty which is always the great thing. And, and um, I think people are going to love the, the series. I'm really excited for I it. Hope. That'll be great. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been trying every way that I know how to contact and get an interview with Allison Sweeney. No luck as, as of yet, but it's just like, you're playing a podcaster. Please come on our podcast. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening, well, I, <laughs> yes. come I, on I, the I'll, podcast. <laughs> I don't know if I can help, but I'll... Uh, I'll uh, <laughs> rave about the experience and see oh. what we can do but uh she, she's yeah. and and you know and the, the one thing i can say it's amazing watching people like her and, and candace like they are you know how you think you're busy like i'm a busy person i've got kids I, yeah i don't even know how those guys do it like she's not a allison really kind of really got behind that series and and i yeah. believe helped create it and she's not a a producer just in name she's like yeah. right there dealing with the wardrobe, dealing with this and that, dealing with the scripts. Which is awesome. Uh, helping the actors. Yeah. You know, she's like, and, and then she's a mom and she's doing everything. Else. Like she's, she, I know she's a very busy lady. Yeah. Uh, and, and just very, very cool. Yeah. Which is amazing. Oh, nice. I love the fact that Hallmark is giving all of these women opportunities to not only, uh, in some case, a lot of Hallmark female writers, we've got female directors, we've got, uh, you know, creators, producers, which is not the case in every studio. And I think that's really cool. Not at all. Yeah. And you know, and it's, it's all real. Like those, they, they are powerful people and, and, uh, yeah. and, and very, very productive. And, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, what's cool is like, they've all been sort of like they got given the keys and, and, and a chance and every one of them seems to be just like nailing it and really delivering. Mm-hmm. And also for me, it's always great that they're also like awesome and really nice. And right, charming. right, and, yeah. You know, when you meet people, you're like, oh, I saw you there. And sometimes you hear stories that aren't great. And, and, right. and like I say, people like Candace and, and, and Allison were just like, it went above and beyond any any expectations you could have mm-hmm. of them. And so That's I can't say enough good things. Yeah. Well, so you Thank have. You Air, I don't know what to say about that guy. <laughs> right. So you, uh, you have Love Under the Rainbow coming out in March, uh, finally, <laughs> and uh, yeah. we interviewed we interviewed Brendan Zub, and he's in that as well. And 
and yeah it has a pretty good cast and looks like a really interesting did you get to go to ireland for this no i did not get to go i'm okay. in vancouver um okay. and and uh but yeah it's you know it's sometimes these films you do them and you're not sure when they're going to come out because i think it was about a year ago that we shot that yeah. one almost and uh and also uh kristen hansen who's the, the writer of it uh, I don't know if you know her, but she she works on Chesapeake Shores, and she's done a couple yeah. other um, uh, Hallmark films. And I mean, I met her years ago. She was a script supervisor on one of the one or two of the Auroras years ago. Okay. And again, um, a, a female writer that's now on fire, and she's done a lot of great stuff for Hallmark, and I think for other networks. But super busy, and she wrote like this script is so charming. And uh, it was one of those weird ones, like when you sometimes when you do different films. You know, you're in, in with everybody, but in this this one, I play uh, David Hagen Jones's like best friend. Okay. He's new in town, and I clearly want a best friend, so I kind of force myself on him. Like I'm like, hey, you're new, we're gonna be buddies. He's like, nah, I don't really, I'm good. And I'm like, no, 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 we're buddies. We're gonna be best <laughs> friends. So I don't even let him off the hook. I, I make sure that we we're gonna be gonna be buds. Oh, and, good. Uh, and, you know, film we do become friends but as a result in terms of shooting it I'm kind of with me and David have all of our scenes um separate from everybody else and I think I only met the, the like group of characters once because the other times I'm just all with him and um, okay and again it's like funny and charming and they let us really improv and all that kind of stuff I I haven't seen it so I don't know mm -hmm. what what will make it into the cut but uh it was a really really fun character and, and the trailer looks amazing and yeah and uh and just yeah great performances and it looks beautiful yeah we're really excited for that for sure well mm -hmm. so we like to end our interviews what we call the team beat questions uh these are questions that amber found from the team beat magazine so <laughs> it's pretty oh. exciting uh this is so. my team beat yeah jump in okay yes so this is your chance at stardom so oh boy uh, the first question what yeah. is okay. the best ice cream flavor chocolate chip mint oh yeah good one i like that i, I clearly not you're like oh yeah no no i do i like it <laughs> um okay number two no i felt it you don't have to love <laughs> okay i'll fight um, for it the little chocolate chip yeah yeah it's a good one uh my favorite my <laughs> personal favorite is rocky road is my personal favorite oh that's so, fair yeah okay but. i can respect that that's <laughs> um so what is your favorite color oh man that's a tough one i always i'm too sensitive whenever i pick a favorite color i feel bad for for the other colors <laughs> um hmm i think i would go with blue or red yeah okay good very patriotic. you know what yes very <laughs> very, very US patriotic. i'm a fellow canadian but uh <laughs> well red's you know, always I'm a good <laughs> yeah my daughter's favorite oh there you go very good okay very good. uh what music are you listening to right now or are you into is your favorite oh you know what there's a this is going to be something you've never even heard of but there's a canadian band called the tragically hip and uh, they're like a classic Canadian band. And just, I've been listening to it because a, a year ago, unfortunately, the lead singer passed away. So this week they've been really kind of nostalgically rolling out all the music in Canada. So I've been uh, rediscovering all these, these great classics. So if anybody's out there and haven't heard of the Tragically Hip, check them out there. They're amazing. Cool, very good. All right, yeah. uh, what is your go-to date night food? Italian okay good At uh, pasta, I guess. yeah yeah the only risky thing about italian is that it's very messy so it can be hard to <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> but, but if you're really getting after it probably the messier the better you know I, <laughs> that, yeah that's fair <laughs> well and you've been married a long yeah. time <laughs> I, I was just about to say 15 yeah. years in i'm like let's go for the food this is yeah. this is what this night's about that's right <laughs> um so what is your go-to date night activity if you're going out on a date night? Ooh man that's a good question we don't get a lot of date nights with the two small kids at home uh i would say honestly for us a perfect evening is when the kids go to bed early 
and yeah. we can just actually watch The Bachelor on Monday nights, cuddled up on the couch, maybe eating, you know, <laughs> yeah, some dessert or something. Nothing cream. more romantic than that. A little yeah. ice cream, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a really funny Ray Romano bit that he does where he's like, he's like, we've all won tonight. We're all out of the house. We've all. <laughs> Yo, it doesn't totally. matter what jokes I say because we've all won. We're all here. We're <laughs> here. We don't have believe. to be accountable to anybody else yeah. in this moment. Like, to win. You're totally. home. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> okay. So dogs or cats? Dogs. Dogs. Okay. I got the worst cat out. I, I, I've mm, broken up too. with girls just because they had cats. Just I can't do it. But yeah. God bless all the cat lovers out there. <laughs> and cool. It's just my allergies. I can't do it. So the remake of Nine Lives of Christmas, you won't... Uh, I will be watching. I will be watching from the safety of my home and not interacting. Um, all right. Beaches or mountains? Beaches. Yeah, I'm not even though I'm Canadian, I don't like the cold. Yeah, agreed. I I do like mountains, but but I like the warmth. I love the beach. Okay, suit and tie or sweats? No contest. Sweat. Sweat. Yeah. I always laugh. We we were at like a red tie or our black tie event not very long ago and we were running around all day in our sweats and stuff and literally you know forgot like some people spend the whole day getting ready and we were in the parking garage of the hotel where the you know the award show was happening literally with people like bringing their shopping carts and we're just getting changed into our like suits <laughs> and like I this tie work I don't know you know got my wife's doing her makeup in the little mirror yeah we're, we're sweats but that people. is really funny i love that okay uh what is your favorite holiday i like christmas yeah oh, no, you got to no. especially as a hallmark you've got to pick christmas yeah i mean you know i love <laughs> i love all the christmas movies but i like presents yeah. i like getting i spoil the kids way too much uh-huh. my wife gets mad at me but you know yeah. i like presents it's so fun uh so it's last question fun. is yeah. uh it's hard for her, people in canada because you don't have the hallmark channel but you can pick one of your own. What is your favorite Hallmark movie? Ooh, good question. I think, you know, obviously the, the Tea Garden Mysteries are amazing, but if it was just a one-off, I would be a battle between Christmas List and um, A Bride for Christmas, but I think I'd, I'd probably have to go Christmas List just because the character was so fun and and. Yeah. and yeah. Alicia was so great. And if there was not one that I was in, I really liked, uh, I'm working with Niall Nader right now. And uh, I really liked Frozen in Love um, was a really charming one. I liked the banter that they, that Mm -hmm. him and and, and Rachel had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one was really good. What's your favorite Hallmark movie? Well, my favorite Christmas movie is uh, called Trading Christmas, which has Gabrielle Miller in it. That's why I love her so much. And, uh, and I just, I really, that movie, uh, it, I mean, the whole cast is so charming. Tom Cavanaugh, uh, is so great. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I love Faith Ford. It's so great. I, you get more time with, uh, with both of the couples plus Andrew Francis is in that. And I love him. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just, it's just really charming and you get a little bit more affection than it maybe some of the new <laughs> Hallmark movies, which yeah. I like. And so I love that. And then I love, as far as non-Christmas, I love um, one called How to Fall in Love with Brooke Dorsey okay. and Eric Mabius. It's really good. Oh, I don't know that one. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's really good. He's like this nerd. They knew each other in high school and oh. he hires her to, uh, to be his like dating coach. And of course- That's, You know what's yeah. funny? I, I saw that one on TV not long ago and I was like, why do I know all of his dialogue? And I, I'd completely forgotten that like eight years ago, I'd auditioned for that movie or whatever. Oh, no way. <laughs> but I was like, I could say what he's about to say next. I know these movies so well. And I'm like, no, this is getting, I literally know what he's going to say next. And then I went back through my old auditions. I was like, oh, that's how I know it. Yeah. I'd read for it. It's really yeah. cute. You know it's what really cute. Like, that one was great. And he was really good. And I like the one that Candace is in where the, the switch, was it switch for, Switch for, when she played yeah, so it's your Christmas, Switch yeah. Christmas. That yeah. one was really true. Yeah, very good, cool. Yeah, and I love any of the signs they'll deliver. It's are, are wonderful. Uh, they're really good. Yeah. So, there's lots of great ones. So you pass the test. We'll keep allowing you to make Hallmark movies. 
I love Hallmark movies. They're they're so much fun to make, and and we watch them. We are literally our Christmas every night is just watching another Hallmark Christmas movie. They're just, uh-huh. you know, got That's kids right. at home. It's just mm-hmm. such a great family watching. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah. on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And um, how can people find you on social media and all that fun stuff? Oh, I'm the worst at social media and all that fun stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get better, but uh, what am I? Uh, I don't even know. I my Instagram is Peter Benson eight eight nine, which is a terrible handle, but it's my wedding date, so it's sentimental. <laughs> uh peter benson 889 and then uh, i'm on twitter also another terrible one it's like <laughs> capital underscore capital j and then capital b e n s o n i think if you just say my name it's in there but i'm gonna work on getting better so if you follow okay. me i will try to really cool stuff on it's gonna be amazing, gonna be amazing. all right good well we'll have all that in the description section people can follow you and that'll be really fun and thanks again and- we really appreciate it and uh yeah, let us know uh, what other podcasts you find and discover. It'll be fun. I will. Honestly, I love this one. I listen to a bunch, uh, you know, to to get ready for this, and 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 they're so much fun. And you guys love the Hallmark movies, and uh, keep it going. It's great. And thanks so much for having me on. No, and anytime. We'll have to do it again. Love to. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay, we'd like to thank Peter for coming on the podcast. It's, it was so much fun to get to talk with him. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section uh, or on Twitter. And uh, make sure you're following the podcast all over social media. We really appreciate that. And uh, if you can give us your, uh, your reviews and ratings on iTunes, we really appreciate that. And if you can give us a thumbs up on, on YouTube, if you're watching on there, that's really great too. So thanks again to Peter and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. You can find all of my coverage of the Sundance Film Festival uh, on there and on my blog and at Ron Tomatoes as well. I'm on there. So all over the place and thanks so much. And we will uh, talk again soon. Bye.